Hey there, it's Bree, and this is my July wrap-up in recent reads. So this month I'm actually doing another combination of a wrap-up and a recent reads video because I haven't done a recent reads video in a little while and there are a few books that I haven't talked about this month. So for the wrap-up, I will be listing the books from my least favorite to my favorite, but as I talk about them, if I haven't talked about them in a previous video this month, then I'll let you know what I thought about them in a little greater detail than I normally would in the wrap-up. So first we're going to start off with stats for July. So I read a total of 29 books in the month of July. I reread one book this month. I did five buddy reads and it was all with the same group of people. I didn't participate in any readathons. I didn't read any arcs. I read nine of the 13 books that were on my July TBR and I DNF'd one book which was of Beast and Beauty, which unfortunately just didn't work out for me. It was a little too stereotypical of like a YA fantasy from like the 2010s maybe, and I just didn't understand why the character was the way that she was. Like she was kind of annoying me and I knew that I was going to have to push myself through it and I just didn't feel like doing that. So I decided to DNF that book, unfortunately, because I have a special edition of the cover. <laughs> as far as the star breakdown, I had a lot of five stars this month. I didn't have any one or two stars. I only had three three stars, five four stars, and then I had 19 five stars, which is of course typical for me. I give a lot of books five stars. For the genre, I read one new adult book, 27 adult books, one YA book, 15 of those books were contemporary romances. I didn't read any paranormal or historicals. I read three sci-fis, four fantasies, five nonfiction, and five books that were not romance. And I didn't read any graphic novels or mangas. The format that I read the books, most of them were audiobooks as usual. 19 books were audiobooks, eight books were ebooks, and I read one physical book. As far as representation of marginalized voices, books that had characters with marginalized voices, nine of the books that I read this month did, and then books with authors with marginalized voices that I knew of was eight. Okay, we're going to start with my three star reads. So the very first one is a book that I just read recently. It's a nonfiction book. It's The Bassoon King by Rain Wilson. Rain played Dwight on The Office. And the reason why I read this is because I'm doing a rewatch of The Office with my husband. And I am also listening to The Office Ladies podcast. And Angela and Jenna, who do The Office Ladies podcast, they speak so highly of Rain, so I was really, really interested to read his book. Unfortunately, it kind of fell a little bit flat for me. He did this odd, to me, combination of talking about like spirituality and his religion and everything, but also trying to be funny when he was talking about his life. And his life was very interesting. He led a very, very interesting life. However, I felt like when he was talking about his life and that type of stuff, he was trying a little too hard to be funny and I could tell and it just wasn't landing for me personally. I do kind of wish he just wrote a book about his spirituality and his religion and stuff because that was the part that I found the most interesting, even though he did have such a spectacular, like kind of crazy life. So unfortunately, I didn't love it as much as I hoped I would. It doesn't mean that I don't like him. I just am kind of like, eh, about the book. So I gave it three stars. The next three star read is Son of a Beach by Mia Sosa. This book was on my TBR. So this one is a short little novella. This book fell flat and it was mostly because of the ending. I think I may have talked about this book actually in my reading vlogs, but it ended up falling flat for me in the end. It's a like, it's a beach read and it's workplace romance, kind of enemies to lovers situation, but it fell flat for me in the end. It felt a little bit rushed and I don't know, I felt like it should have been a full-length novel. Next is Sugar Daddies by Jade West. I talk about this book in one of my reading vlogs, and this one is a polyamorous relationship about a girl who is looking for a sugar daddy and these two guys who are in a couple who are looking for a girl to be a sugar baby for them. And I was just kind of eh about it. And then moving on to the four stars, the first one is Stalked by the Kraken by Lillian Lark. So I ended up reading this book because I read another book by Lillian Lark that I absolutely loved and I was like, I need to read everything that this author writes. And I saw that she had a tentacle <laughs> romance and I was like, I don't know, I don't think, no, I did, I did. I read one tentacle romance, that, like a romance that involved a man that was like a half octopus type guy like a cracking guy and I didn't love it because of the tentacles but I was like I'm gonna give tentacles one more try and the reason why I didn't love the other one was because I just like the way the tentacles were described grossed me out I could picture it a little too well and I just couldn't handle it but I was like you know what 
let me give this one a try because I really like this author and I ended up actually pretty much liking this one for the most part. Um, it wasn't the best thing I ever read, which is why I gave it four stars instead of five, but it was actually really good and done really well. Um, I feel like Lillian Lark is going to be an author of like monster type romances that I'm really going to like or like different type romances because the other book that I read by her was a different kind of romance. So the heroine is actually a matchmaking witch. The hero is an ancient sea creature and I know that sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it is weird, but it's also really, really interesting. My next four star read was Lessons in Sin by Pam Godwin. This book is a book that I read be mostly because of Jen from the Book Refuge. She actually messaged me about and told me about it because I love Priest by Sierra Simone. So obviously this is a forbidden romance. The hero is a priest. He also is like the head of this Catholic school for girls and the heroine is a student at the school. She's 18 years old, but she is still a student. And honestly, that's the number one reason for the most part that I ended up giving this four stars. I did talk about this in a reading vlog much more in depth, so you can check that out. But if you're interested in a very taboo forbidden romance, age gap, teacher student, this is the book for you. Next was The Favor by Suzanne Wright. I really, really enjoyed this book. This was a member wreck and I read this in a reading vlog. I talk much more in depth about it, but basically this is a not grumpy sunshine but it definitely has a grumpy hero it's a marriage of convenience and it's a workplace romance really really good next is strange love it's galactic love book number one by Anne aguire this is one of the books that i read as a buddy read with a group of ladies where we read a bunch of really weird books and i talked about this i think in a recent reads i don't I think it was a recent reads and not a reading vlog, but I ended up really, really liking this. It's a super, super cute romance between an alien robot and a human woman, and it has a really fun dog character in it. And then my last four-star read, my favorite four-star read was Isn't It Bromantic? It's Bromance Book Club, book number four by Lissa K. Adams. This is a series, one of the rare series that I read the book as soon as it comes out. Normally I'm a backlist kind of reader, but I have been loving the Bromance Book Club series so much. I think books two and three are probably my favorites. This one and the first one I really liked, but they weren't my favorites. I wasn't excited about this book, surprisingly. I mean, I was excited about it and I read it right away because I really liked the series, but I was kind of a little bit like eh, about it because it's about the character that they call the Russian. He is kind of like, I always felt like he was much more of a background character, like a kind of character that was there to be funny. He is a hockey player, so it's a sports romance and kind of marriage of convenience, childhood friends to lovers situation second chance romance as well and i was just not too thrilled about his book because i saw no appeal to me with this character because i was like why is he getting his own book there are other characters that are in like this group of friends that i would much rather read their books and not his and i just wasn't excited about it but it ended up surprising me i gave it four stars because ultimately i still liked the other books better and this one wasn't my favorite, but it surprised me. It surprised me. So if you are a little bit hesitant, if you've read the series and you're a little bit hesitant about this one because of who the book is about, give it a try because it might surprise you too. Oh, and by the way, the Bromance Book Club series is a series that follows this group of guys who have a bromance book club where they read romance novels to try and better themselves and better their relationships. And there's a bunch of different tropes within that series. Okay, moving on to my many, many five-star reads. I read so many great books this month. The first one is Fair Play. It's Hat Trick book number one by Samantha Wayland. This book was gifted to me by Esty. It's one of her favorite series and I can definitely see why. This is a hockey romance and what I really liked about this is that the hero is bi. It ended up being so good because the hero is such a cinnamon role and I just loved him so much and I loved him with the heroine. Really, really good sports romance. I highly, highly recommend it. And I will definitely be moving on the series. She actually, Esty actually got me the entire box set, which you can buy on Amazon. So she got me the ebook box set, which is very exciting. Next is one of my nonfiction reads and that was Beautiful on the Outside by Adam Rapon. I talked about this in a recent reads video. He was the first openly gay Olympic figure skater. He is absolutely amazing and hilarious. And I like, I knew that I wanted to read his book just because I liked him as a person and the book was really, really entertaining. Next is Karamo by Karamo Brown. Karamo is one of the hosts of Queer Eye. I loved his book so much. He was so vulnerable in it. The main reason why I read this, not only because I love Queer Eye, but also because Karamo was one of the guests on the Man Enough podcast. It's Justin Baldoni's podcast. Justin Baldoni has a book called Man Enough that I really, really liked. And I love, this was the, their first episode for the podcast. I loved this conversation and they referenced Karamo's book quite a bit in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to read more. I so appreciated his perspective and I really liked the behind the scenes look of them getting ready to be on Queer 
your eye, especially since I read Tan's book. So seeing both of their perspectives was really, really interesting. Next is another nonfiction book. I read The Actor's Life, A Survival Guide by Jenna Fisher. This book was obviously not written for me. I have no desire to be an actor whatsoever, but I do really like Jenna Fisher. She played Pam on The Office, and I, like I said, I'm rewatching The Office, and I'm listening to The Office Ladies podcast as I rewatch it. I feel like Angela and Jenna have referenced this book quite a bit, like they talk about different stories that Jenna talks about in this book, and so I really wanted to read it. Ultimately, it is like a survival guide for actors, and as someone who has no desire to be an actor, was never in the business, no plans to be in the business, I just found this really, really interesting to see how the business worked because she talks about her story. I also really like her story, especially when she talks about The Office and how much chemistry she had with John Krasinski and how they both really wanted the other one to get hired for it because they really, really liked each other and they worked really well together right from the beginning. I loved that whole part of it, but I also just loved hearing her story and how just all the little intricacies that you really don't think about when it comes to acting and everything. I just found it really, really interesting. Next is another nonfiction book, and it is For the Love of Men. It's From Toxic to a More Mindful Masculinity by Liz Plank. So Liz Plank is a co-host in the Man Enough podcast with Justin Baldoni. And I knew that I wanted to read her book because Justin talks about her and her book in his book and also they talk about on the podcast. And I just love everything she's had to say within that podcast. And this book was so interesting because she interviewed men from all over the world, all different walks of life. She references data and everything. She just talks about masculinity and how we're pushing for women to constantly step outside of what society expects from us. But... We never really talk about men in the same way and how for some reason there are men out there who feel like, you know, if women get this leg up, then that would be detrimental to men when really it's the reverse. Like it's beneficial for everyone if everyone is more equal and it doesn't have to be men against women. Like why can't we all just have what we need to survive? And I just felt like it's such an interesting conversation, such a relevant conversation and I just agreed with so much of everything that she said and it just it makes so much sense it makes so much sense and it was a great companion to read Justin's book and her book this whole conversation about masculinity and redefining it and everything has been a really important one for myself but also for my husband and I we've had some really really great conversations he listens to every man enough podcast that comes out and we talk about it like every Monday a new man enough podcast comes out and him and I at dinner will talk about it he also read man enough and he's gonna read this book too and I can't wait to talk to him about it it's it's been really really great for our relationship and honestly for his friendships as well he's had some really really great discussions with friends because he's read these books and has been listening to this podcast and he's recommended it to friends and things too next is sweet hand it's island bites book number one by ng peltier or peltier this book was super freaking adorable and I knew this was one of those books that I knew I was gonna like because I like any book that has to do with like cooking if there's a chef or a baker and the heroine is a baker in this one he's in the entertainment industry he's not like an actor or anything but he's in the industry and she is kind of like a, a famous baker I just one of the main things that I really liked about this was how the hero was so good at apologizing which I feel like is very, very underrated, but such an amazing trait when a man can apologize when he's done something wrong. He's not perfect. He makes mistakes, but he apologizes for them and genuinely apologizes. And it's just, it was very, very refreshing to read and it made me love him even more. Next is The Chaos of Standing Still. This is by Jessica Brody. This was the only YA that I read this month, but I ended up really, really liking this. This book is really, really interesting. It has all the elements of a YA contemporary that I always like. It has, you know, very interesting characters and interesting situation the hero and the heroine end up getting trapped in this airport because of a snowstorm and the heroine is dealing with a lot of grief she lost her best friend and she has a lot that she's going through the hero is dealing with some issues that he has with his parents and they end up like literally bumping into each other and she ends up dropping her phone he drops his phone when they bump into each other and they just so happen to have the exact same phone case and the exact same phone so they grab each other's phone and they like go off in their separate ways thinking that they're gonna go fly away and everything but then they end up getting trapped in the airport and they find out that they have the other person's phone and they end up reconnecting and it's just it's really really good and it's just their adventure of like this these two young people falling in love 
in one day at the airport in a unique situation, but also kind of dealing with their own issues. And it's, you know, typical YA contemporary stuff, but done really, really well. Next is Girls Weekend by CM Nicosta. I talked more about this in a reading vlog. I loved this book. It was so freaking adorable. It's a monster romance. Mostly it's between elves and then orcs. This group of girls, I think there's like three or four of them, they go on this Girls Weekend trip to this nudist resort where there's a bunch of hot orcs and they all have like their own stories of debauchery and everything but then it ends up there are a couple of them who end up falling in love and it's absolutely adorable it's a quick read and super fun and I really liked it that was a wreck for me from one of my members too and it was such a good one next is one of my buddy reads it's the mist walker it's the mist book number one by Regine Abel I talk about this one in a reading vlog absolutely loved it super super unique actually I think I did I talk about this in a reading vlog or a rap or a recent reads I can't remember but I really really like this one Regine Abel is the one who wrote I married a lizard man which is why I read this book because I really liked I married a lizard man and I really liked this one as well. This is basically a romance between a girl and a guy who is the personification of every wish that she's ever had. Next is Getting Schooled. It's The Wright Brothers, book number one by Christina C. Jones. I read this in a reading vlog and I absolutely loved it. This was my very first Christina C. Jones book. It absolutely will not be my last. In fact, I put another Christina C. Jones book on my TBR for August and I can't wait to read it. I can't wait to read her entire backlist. I get so excited when I find an author like this that I absolutely love and I really, really liked this one. It's like a different kind of take on a student teacher romance because the heroine is a student aide and the hero is a military veteran who's going back to school. So he actually is older than her, I believe, but has such a great meet cute kind of enemies to lovers and it's so so good next is untouchable it's ravenswood book number two by talia hibbert this is a book that was on my tbr this is a series that i've been absolutely loving but also have absolutely been reading completely out of order so fyi you can read this series out of order so this book is a nanny romance and it's adorable it's also like a bad boy romance childhood acquaintances to lovers and it's just it's so good because it's almost like a reformed bad boy situation like the hero was a bad boy in high school they knew each other i don't know if it was high school or not but they knew each other as kids and the hero was like the bad boy and she was kind of nerdy but they always kind of recognized each other and noticed each other but they never really interacted too much and then they get older and hero comes back into town because he lost his wife so he's a single dad he's got two kids who are very rambunctious and he needs a nanny and the heroine needs a job she ends up like moving in with him so you have that like forced proximity situation too it's just it's so great and of course Talia Hibbert had some of the best ste steamy scenes ever so obviously I loved this book so much it was really really good highly highly recommend the series you don't have to read the books in order <laughs> next for a reading vlog I read Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne this was another wreck by one of my members it was such a great wreck this actually has been on my radar for a while because I've seen a few people talk about it and I loved this one so much I almost feel like this has a little bit, it's definitely a romance, but it has a little bit of like women's fiction-y vibes kind of in there as well, but it's a great kind of in-between. And I loved this so much. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I loved the hero because he was not grumpy, but not really a very warm, fuzzy kind of hero, but you kind of love him for it. And he's going through some intense stuff. The heroine, she does hand lettering professionally. And I loved how the author wove that into the storytelling. And I thought it was really, really interesting, but such a good book, highly recommend it. Definitely, if you wanna hear more thoughts on it, more detailed thoughts, check out the reading blog. Next is I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. This one is a book that I read in a reading vlog as well. I bet he read this book. It was so, so good. I actually read this book because of Mariana Zapata. She tweeted about it and I immediately picked it up. This is a marriage of convenience between a lizard-like alien and a human-type heroine. So really, really good. Next is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling in this very interesting mob-like world. Oh my gosh, I loved this book. I loved Hades' character especially. Like out of everyone, I think Hades is the reason why I love this book so much because he's one of those like kind of reluctant heroes. <laughs> he knows he has to be like this dark character. He's been vilified and he owns that but he also cares very deeply for the underworld and his people that live in the underworld. And he also cares very deeply for Persephone, even though he doesn't really want to. And he kind of, I say reluctant because like she'll be hurt or something and he'll try to ignore the fact that she's hurt, but he just can't <laughs> because he cares too much and he doesn't want to care, but he can't help but care. So good, I can't wait for the next book in the series. Okay, now for my top five books of the month. 
Coming in at number five is The Nightmare. It's The Mist number two by Regine Abel. So I definitely recommend you read The Mist Walker first because this one is the second book in the series, but this one is so good. It's a romance between a woman and her nightmare, her personified nightmare. It's really, really interesting. I talk more about it in a reading vlog. And then next is Ruthless Stranger. It's Mafia Wars book number one by Maggie Cole. This one is one that Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life recommended to me. And oh my God, I'm so glad that she did. I loved this book so much freaking much. The heroine has just gone through the a divorce and her friends take her to Las Vegas and the hero overhears them talking about like her fantasy and he kind of reenacts it for her all while she is blindfolded and so she never really sees him and then like time passes and they see each other again. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I talk more about it in that reading vlog, but oh, this book was so good. Next is Tangled Wires by Lillian Lark. This is the book that I told you the reason why I read the Tentacle book was because of this author. This was such an interesting book. It's a dark sci-fi romance. I think I talked about this in a recent reads video, but it's a dark sci-fi romance and it's a romance between a woman and an AI. There's definitely a dark element to this book, but oh my gosh, it's so, 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 so good. Few trigger warnings though for suicide and a suicide attempt. It's also a book that has a lot of pining in it, which I love, and a hero that worships the ground the heroine walks on. And then coming in at number two is Look the Part by Jewel E. Ann. This is another new to me author that I know I'm going to love all the other books that this author writes. This is a book that I immediately knew that I was going to love. I talk about it in a reading vlog. I freaking loved this book so much. It's a grumpy sunshine, like one of the best grumpy sunshine books. Kind of workplace-ish romance, but it's enemies to lovers. The hero is a lawyer and he owns like this building and he has this new tenant who is a musical therapist, but he doesn't realize that hello musical therapy means she's going to be making quite a bit of noise and he gets annoyed by it. And so he wants to kick her out and she doesn't really let him. And it's just, it's so, so good. He also is a single dad. He's dealing with grief, you know, very much a tortured hero. And then last but not least, my favorite read of July was The Mixtape by Brittany Cherry. This is one of her most recent books that she came out with and I loved it so much. It's so funny. I did a video recently where I read this book after I did the video, but I don't normally like books with the theme trope in it. This is one of the books that I love that has the theme trope in it. And I did a video talking about books with famous people, even though I don't normally like <laughs> famous people in books, this is one of those books. So this is a rock star romance. The hero was a rock star. He's dealing with a lot of grief as well. He lost his brother and his brother was famous with him. He feels like a lot of people are blaming him for it. The heroine is a chef. She ends up becoming his personal chef through like fate and everything and ends up working out that they end up getting thrown together. And I loved how that works out, but she ends up becoming his personal chef. And then it's their romance. Oh my gosh, it is so freaking good. I mean, it's Britney C. Cherry. It's emotional. It's interesting. You have swoony heroes, swoony moments. Oh, it's so, so good. And it was my favorite book of July. All right, guys, those are all the books that I read in July. Let me know down below what your favorite books, maybe your top five favorite books that you read in July, if you have that list. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, happy reading.